So to tie in with McCarrick, here's the interesting thing about the situation with WSOU. That's the radio station? That's the radio Satanic station. Satanic radio station, okay. In 1986 is when the radio station changed its its recorded or its broadcast format to start broadcasting exclusively heavy metal like death metal music. 1986 also happens to be the same year that uh, Bishop McCarrick became the Archbishop of Newark, New Jersey. Oh, oh. yes. That's so, right. So if people need to know, Cardinal McCarrick was, before he was DC, he was Newark, where this college is. Right. Yep. Man, this stuff is... It gets, I mean, you, you start following these rabbit holes and after a while, certain things start to fall into place and suddenly you've got a picture that makes a little bit of sense. Archbishop McCarrick at that time was known to be sleeping with seminarians. He had a beach house in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, he was trolling around the campus and picking up the seminarians, especially the ones that he liked the most and pressing them into situations that were extremely compromising and uncomfortable until after a while they kind of accepted it and started calling yeah, so, him Uncle Ted. So that what they would he would do is, we know this now, it's in the McCarrick Report, he mm -hmm. would invite peop, these young men, his handsome men, nephews he calls them, to his beach house. But he already knew how many beds were at the beach house and he'd always make sure there was one extra guy and he would say to that one, well, you're going to have to sleep in my bed because we're short on a bed. Right. He did that yep. numerous times. That was... That was how he preyed on young men. So McCarrick engaged in that behavior the same year that the radio station's format changed to death metal, satanic music. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a very hard time believing that this is just a coincidence. Yes. I can't prove anything, but when you start looking at the pieces and you understand that homosexuality and the occult are connected, it seems a logical conclusion that McCarrick was also engaged in some sort of occult behavior. Yes. Well, and in, in my book, Infiltration, I show that he goes to the region of St. Gallen Mafia and Aleister Crowley, the, the Gnostic Catholic Church, which is part of Crowley's system, was also there. Like just, really? Yeah, within just like 30 miles of where, huh. of where McCarrick was. And Crowley has, in his magical occult system, sex magic. And as you go up the ladder in the sex magic, it gets into sodomy and homosexuality. That's, That's right. all documented in, in my book, Infiltration, if you want to see that. And then how, and my, I, I suspect, we I don't know if we can ever prove this, but I suspect that because that has such a stronghold in that portion of Switzerland, my guess, and that's also where the Conference of European Bishops meet, my guess is that there is some occult, you know, connection there with the sex magic, which of course is connected with the sodomy. And you know, then, you know, we see European bishop center there, and then we see McCarrick having gone there and then come back mm -hmm. to America and then shoot right up the ranks to Cardinal of DC. You know, it's weird. Um, the, the first time that I heard the word coprophagia mm, mm. was, I'm going to have to bleep, bleep you out. Yeah. Well, but the first time that I ever heard that word was, or, or saw that word was when I was reading and investigating Alistair Crowley about 20 years ago. Um, the second time that I ever heard that word was from Pope Francis himself. Yep. So why does he know what that is? And the only I reason didn't know, I, know I didn't know what was, it was when Francis said it until people started talking about it. I said, why are right. we talking about this? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely foul, but it's a part of Crowley's, uh, rules of Thelema, yeah. which is his made up religion that worships the devil through yeah. sex magic. And, and yeah. he also, Crowley also wrote the Gnostic Catholic mass. Ew. And I'm not even going to tell you what they use for the bread and the elements. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I can only imagine, but it's a mockery of the mass. It's a mockery of the mass. And, um, yeah, it's right there next to St. Gallen where all this stuff started going on in Switzerland. It's right there, the same County, but yeah. And you know what else is kind of weird is 
it's been a while since I wrote this book, so I don't remember all the details, but Crowley's remains were brought back to New Jersey. No way. Yeah. Oh, now that's very interesting. I'd be very interested to know exactly where. Uh, why, why New Jersey? This is reading from the book, page mm-hmm. 206. The gross sex magic of Aleister Crowley's Gnostic Catholic Church is symbolically connected with Theodore McCarrick, since Crowley's cremated ashes are buried in Hampton, New Jersey, within McCarrick's first diocese of Metuchen. Oh, weird. New Jersey, where he served as bishop there from 1980 to 1986. Uh, McCarrick then magically ascended to priest, 1958, Monsignor, 65, Bishop, 77, Archbishop, 86, and then Cardinal in 2001, without ever having served as a pastor of a parish. His ascent through the hierarchy happened impressively after his initial visit to St. Gallen in 1949, and at least 10 other visits subsequently. I was, I met two traditional Catholics who said, Oh, Dr. Marshall read your book infiltration. Thank you. We were in Thalema. We were in Crowley's cult and we are now Catholic. They attend the traditional Latin mass. Yes. I met them. Two of them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. God's grace is powerful. That's why we pray the rosary. And we, we say these things because People need to hear it. People are lost. They're under the power of the devil. I I heard that the grandson of Aleister Crowley converted to Catholicism and he is currently undergoing exorcism. Well, that's fantastic. We should, everybody say a Hail Mary for him. 